Hey everyone, today we are going to discuss one of the most important concepts in computer science, time complexity, space complexity and big O notation. Whether you are preparing for coding interviews or planning to write more efficient code, this is one of the fundamental concepts to understand. So don't skip it. Here is what's coming up. First we'll start with a fun real world scenario of chocolate distribution. You'll see how different ways of solving the same problem can impact time and space complexity. Then we'll see what the time complexity and space complexity really mean. We'll also talk about the challenges of computing them in real scenarios. From there we'll go to asymptotic analysis and explore big O notation, how it's calculated. We'll also break down the most common types of big O from O of 1 to O of 2 power n with code examples. After that, we'll quickly recap all the key takeaways and finally two fun segments to test your skills. A quick quiz to reinforce what you have learned and a spot the bug challenge where you'll analyze a snippet of code and find the hidden flaw. It's going to be interactive, practical and packed with examples. Imagine it's your birthday and you have to distribute chocolates to students who are sitting in a line. Now let's look at two different ways you could do it and how they affect the time it takes and space you use. In the first approach, your chocolate bag stays right at the start of the line. Here is what you do. You pick one chocolate from the bag and hand it over to the first student and you come back. Then you pick another chocolate, you go to the second student, you come back, then third then come back and repeat the same process till n students. In the second approach, you carry the entire bag with you. So, as long as you are going, you are going to carry the bag. You give a chocolate to the first student, move, give a chocolate to the next one, and th to third, and so on. Just a steady walk, no back and forth. So, let's see which one is better. In case one, the time you spend is like this. One step for the first student, two steps for the second, three steps for the third and so on till n. And then it will become n into n plus 1 by 2 which will be around n square plus something something something. Now let's take the second scenario. So you walk down the lane only once handing out the chocolates. So the time is going to be in proportion to n. Now let's see the space. In the first scenario, there is only one chocolate you should carry at all the time. The space it needs is only proportional to one chocolate. But in the second scenario, you have to carry all the n chocolates at the same time. So the space is also similar to n. So that's how based on the algorithm which you choose, it impacts time and space. In the first approach, it takes more time but less space. In the second approach, it takes more space but it saves you a lot of time. Usually we optimize it for time because faster programs means everything is smoother. As we discussed earlier, time complexity refers to how fast a code runs while space complexity refers to how much memory it consumes. We'll see what's behind this later. But how do we actually measure this? Let's take the above code as an example. If you run it on Mac, it might take close to one second, let's say. If you run it on Windows, it may take 1.5 second. These differences occur because the runtime depends on many factors such as the operating system, background processes, processor speed, available memory and many other factors. So measuring performance by physically run, running the code isn't reliable and it's not even possible, especially in interviews or when analyzing algorithms. That's why we use something called asymptotic analysis. So asymptotic analysis measures an algorithm based on how much input grows and it focuses on growth rate, not in seconds or milliseconds, but in terms of how many operations it performs as n increases. We analyze the algorithm independently as if everything else stays the same and we focus on only one thing, input. If you go back to the chocolate example, we completely ignored the speed of the person handing them or what kind of shoes they were wearing because none of that matters in our analysis. The only thing that changed was the number of students. 
That's exactly how asymptotic analysis works. We focus purely on how the algorithm scales with input and we ignore the noise. Why? Because the input is the only thing that affects performance in the long run. So if we go back to our definitions, time, com time complexity means how fast the code runs as the input grows and space complexity means how much memory it consumes as the input grows. When it comes to analyzing algorithms, textbooks usually give three main notations. Big O, Omega, Theta. Big O for worst case, Omega for best case, Theta for average case. But in most coding interviews and real world discussions, we almost always focus on Big O notation. Why? Because if you know your algorithm's worst case performance, you already have an upper bound. The algorithm will never perform worse than that. So if it can handle the worst case scenario, everything else is better than that. Now let's quickly run through some of the common time complexities you'll see in your coding problems. You have constant, which is O of 1, usually for performing basic operations, logarithmic O of log n, for things like binary search and all. Linear O of n for looping over elements in an array. Linear atomic O of n log n usually for sorting. Quadratic O of n square for nested loops. Cubic O of n cube for three loops. Exponential O of 2 power n for all permutations. We'll see some code examples and why the complexity is like that in a while. Even if you don't understand the code or even if you don't understand these complexities, that's fine. You just have to remember these complexities and we may relate in future. Alright, now let's break down how to actually compute the time complexity by analyzing some code. If you look at the code, the first line runs just once, which is around O of 1. The second line is also constant. No matter what's the input size, it runs only once. But this one runs n times, as this is inside a loop. This one runs n times, this one n times, as this piece is inside another loop, it runs n into n times. And this one is for 1. Overall, it's like 2n square plus n plus 3. When computing time complexity, we focus on the term that grows the fastest as n gets larger, the dominant term, which is this, and we ignore the rest. So even if the actual count is 3n square plus n plus 5, we simplify it to O of n square. And we ignore the constants because they don't impact the growth rate when the input becomes large. In short, the time complexity is about the biggest term, the one that has the biggest impact as the input grows and ignoring everything else. Let's dive into some real examples of time complexity, starting with O of 1, also known as constant time. So what does constant time mean? It means the operation takes the same amount of time no matter how large the input is. For instance, if you see in this example, it sums up the first two elements of array. So even if the input size is a million or a thousand or just 10, it doesn't matter. It always takes the first two elements and adds it. This is what is constant time. This is the fastest and most efficient time complexity you can get. Next is O of log n, logarithmic time. This means as the input grows, it takes the form of a logarithm. Something like this. We cut the input by half every time. So even if your list goes from 1000 to million, the number of steps only increases by a handful. If we have 1000 elements, in the next run it will become 500, in the next it will become 250. So you just have to compute it at max 10 times. That's why logarithmic time complexities are super efficient for large data sets. Now let's talk about O of n or linear time. In this case, the time it takes to run the algorithm directly grows in proportion to n. So here if you see this line runs n times 
so if the array size doubles this will run twice as much so it grows similar to the size of the array linear time algorithms are very common and easy to understand this is the second case of chocolate distribution that we did earlier now let's explore o of n log n this complexity shows up in some of the most efficient sorting algorithms like merge sort here is how it works the algorithm splits the input into smaller parts dividing the array into half which takes about log n and next it merges which takes around n steps so if you multiply it takes o of n log n even if you don't understand this code that's fine just remember the time complexity for now and associate o of n log n with sorting let's see o of n square this happens when you have nested loops meaning one loop inside another and both run over the entire input for example if you have a list of elements and you want to compute the sum of product of each element with another it comes around o of n square so as the input grows the run time grows really fast if the input becomes 3 times its time complexity becomes 9 times so they are usually okay for small data sets but not for large ones next is o of n cube this is similar to o of n square but with three loops usually for three dimensional arrays we usually avoid it as much as possible finally let's talk about o of 2 power n or exponential time complexity this happens when the number of operations doubles with every input so imagine you are generating all subsets for every input you'll have two options whether to, to include or to exclude so for each element the number of subset doubles so it will be 2 into 2 into 2 then it will become 2 power n so even with a small increase in input size it will cause the run time to explode that's why we always look for more efficient algorithms whenever we face exponential here are the key takeaways time complexity means how fast your code runs space complexity means how much memory it takes we usually measure it based on the input size big o means worst case scenario you just have to focus on the dominant term this is the order of the some common time complexities and we have to always think about efficiency so instead of going for bigger time complexities we have to optimize the code for smaller time complexities Let's put your understanding of this topic to a test with a quiz. I'll ask you some questions. You can pause the video, think it through and answer them yourself before I reveal the correct answer. Let's get started. So what does time complexity measure? So the answer is B. It's how runtime grows as input size increases. Next question, what does space complexity refer to? It's the amount of memory required as input grows. Next question is which notation is commonly used to express worst case time complexity? It's big O. Omega is for best. Theta is for average. The next question is what's the time complexity of accessing the first element in an array? It's O of one. It doesn't matter if there are million elements or just ten elements. It always takes constant time to get the first element. Next question is if the algorithm has nested loops, each running n times, what's the time complexity? So it's O of n square if it has nested loops. Great job if you got most of this right. If not, rewind and review the video. And don't forget to practice coding with complexity in mind. Let's see the final segment. Spot the bug. This code is supposed to run with O of n square complexity as it has nested loops, but it runs infinitely. Can you spot the bug? Share your answer in the comments. Let's see who gets it. If you found this video helpful please like subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss our upcoming videos leave your thoughts or questions in the comments your feedback motivates us to create even better content thanks for watching and happy coding